Now here I will be using this 3D printed battery holder, link for which will be provided in the description. So here I've placed the three battery sets in such a way that I can connect them in series. And now it is time to do the connections. Positive, negative, positive. Step one, take a wire, measure the distance from positive to negative and cut it in four equal halves. After that, use the wire stripper to strip the ends of your wires and put some flux. Next, take two wires and place them as shown. Next, solder them. Now, here I'm using double wires to increase up the current flow evenly. Now, same thing on the other side. The overall positive and the overall negative. The voltage, 11.6 volts. Next, take a long wire and cut it into four equal parts. Next, strip it only on one side, no stripping on this side. Next, take two of these wires and connect them to B1 and B2. Eight more wires, two of which will be connected to B+, same to B- and same to P+, and P-. The BMS wiring is finished. Now, before moving on further, let me ask you a question. Have you been waiting weeks for PCBs and paying too much for prototypes? Let me introduce you to our sponsors. Next PCB delivers professional circuit boards starting at just 10 cents. So get your PCBs manufactured in just 24 hours with full assembly services, 600,000 plus components in stock and ISO certified quality. From single prototypes to mass production, they have got you covered. Fast worldwide shipping with DHL and FedEx. Visit nextpcb.com link is in the description below and get your projects started today let's connect it to the battery so place the bms in the direction as shown and glue it with your glue gun next cut off the wires as shown first solder the b2 wire next comes the b plus wire after that comes your b1 wire now the b minus wire so let's connect it so with that we have completed all the connections for the battery as you can see it is working now take this female connector and connect its red wire to p plus and black to p minus after that i will be using this buck boost converter and you can use any buck boost converter that you have this is the output side with red led and this one is the input side green led yellow wires to the output now the battery output will be connected to the input side of the bug boost converter here the yellow pair is for positive and black for negative after successful connection you will see that the red led at the output is glowing now to the output i have connected this multimeter and the default voltage is 12.18 which we can change with the potentiometer knob and i'm going to set it to 14 volts now there is another potentiometer at the input side for current adjustment so take a bulb this is 40 volts and connect it to the output now take a clamp meter and measure the draw current you can see 4 amperes so let's bring it down Yeah, so here I have reduced the current to 1.6 amperes because of which the bulb has stopped glowing. After that, disconnect the battery from the bug boost module. Now I have this other product with which you can charge your 12 volts battery from USB point. So let's charge my lithium battery pack. 
So after a few hours, you can see that the battery voltage has increased to 12.18 volts. Uh, the maximum possible voltage is 12.60, but this is good enough. Next, what you will need is a separator between the bug boost module and your lithium ion batteries to prevent the heat transfer. Next, zip tie the module and the batteries together. After that, take the black pair and connect it to the negative input terminal. Next, use your hot glue gun to fix everything. Next, you will need a red wire for connecting to the positive input side of the bug boost module. After that, take a 2 ampere switch and hot glue it to your bug boost module as shown. Now, take your positive red wire and connect it to the middle terminal of the switch. Then, take the green wire from the battery pack and connect it to the other terminal of the switch. Next, take two battery charging cables and connect them to the output of the bug boost module. Red to positive and black to negative. Next, take this heat shrink insulation and place it like this. So the construction part is fully complete and as you can see that now the output voltage is 14 volts which is good enough for charging your batteries. Now I have this dead old car battery and it's rated at 12 volts 35 ampere hour. Its open circuit voltage is 11 volts so it is completely discharged and if we do a load test with this bike starter motor. As you can see that it is running very slow. So let's restore the battery and recharge it with my portable battery charger. So let's restore it. So red wire is positive. and black is negative so let's turn on our power bank and you should see the voltage increase on the multimeter so here as you can see that the battery voltage is rising rapidly let's leave it for some time so after charging it for some time you can see uh, the battery voltage has stabilized at 13 volts and if i connect my bike starter motor now you can see that it is running much faster. There is no comparison now. Wow. So yes, the battery has revived. Now let's set the potentiometer of my battery charger to 7 volts because I have this Royal Enfield vintage bike which has a battery of 6 volts. So let's open up the battery case clean up the corroded battery terminals and find out its present voltage. You can see that the voltage is 2.9 volts so it is completely discharged and uh, the plates inside are dry so we need to fill some distal water in it and then recharge it with my power bank. Make sure that you connect uh, the red terminal to the positive and black terminal to the negative after which turn on the switch and the battery has started charging. The battery voltage has increased to 6 volts which is what we needed. So this is how this cordless battery charger is going to be useful for each and every one of you. And that's not it, you can also use it as a cordless bench power supply 12 volts.